everyone welcome back to this channel so we're going to walk through another options that you can find in this basic spectrum analyzer so what you're seeing on the screen right now is what we call a spectrum emission mask so this is very useful when you want to measure the signal of interest such as what you're seeing right now is a wide band digital signal when you want to make sure the signal rise and fall within the spectrum of interest so you can use this spectrum emission mask to determine whether your signal still fall within the spectrum that has been assigned to your license. So this is a setup that I just made prior to starting this video recording. And I'm going to preset it so that you can see step by step of what I'm doing. So I'm going to preset this. And this is how it looks like when you power up. And I'm going to turn on the signal. So as you can see, there's one signal popping out at 1 gigahertz. That's what I'm transmitting from the signal source. And I'm going to change the span. So the reason why I'm doing this is just to make sure there's a signal of interest within the band of what I'm going to set up for the SEM, the spectrum emission mask. So when I've seen the signal, I know that it's happening at 1 gigahertz. As you can see on the screen, then we go to mashup and if your unit has the options you should see the SEM over here so we click on that so this is how it looks like by default the red line is absolute limit so that is the pass and fill criteria so by default as you can see there are start and stop frequency points of measurements so we can actually bypass some of the points and just focus on, let's say, three points of interest. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that my reference channel is measured at the right point. So I want to go to a channel integration bandwidth. So let's go back again and I'm going to explain that. So once you go to the measure, so if you double click on this one, so you, the first time you click this, you are able to select what type of measurement you want. And this is SEM selected. So you can see it's a bit goldish. And once you press one more time, it will go to the menu where you can set up the SEM options. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that the reference channel is at the right point and the right setup. So we know that the signal of interest is about 4.8 megahertz bandwidth. So we set this one to 4.8. and channel span 5 meg. Sorry, I had to change that. So resolution bandwidth, I can set it to auto or manual. I just leave it as 30k. Right, then we return. So the next thing I want to do is to change the offset and the limit. Let's go there. So the first offset is starting at 2.5 megahertz. So it will go left and right, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is because I know my signal cutting off about 2 megahertz. So let's start at 2 megahertz. 2 megahertz. Stop. Let's say we put a 200 kilohertz range. So let's start at 2.2 2 .2 megahertz maybe. So you see that there's some line over here showing you that that's the limit file that has been set. You can treat this as like how you create a limit file where in between points they will interpolate. So if it's the same power level, they will just stretch between 2 mag to 2.3 mag. So it's a flat line. So we can do that. So currently we set it as coupled, means that the start point at 2 mag is minus 14, the stop point 0.3 mag is minus 14 or so. You can make it a flat line or you can make it a gradual slope as you wish. So let's do a slope maybe at minus 18. So you can type 18 and then minus dBm. So you just can see that there's a slope over here, a tiny little slope. Okay, let's zoom in. How do we zoom in? Just to remove the last point, 7.5 mag, because that's how you're going to set the range of it. So we go back to first page then turn it off so you can see that it's zooming in and the last one is format so it means that from left and right we have a four megahertz so we can go back to D 
of 70. Turn it on for now. Of course, you can you can turn it on anytime you wish. Right. So let's go back to point offset A. So we start at 2 mag to 2.3 mag. So resolution 30 kilohertz is up to you. So at every point, you can actually change the resolution bandwidth as you wish. You can start with 1 kilohertz. You can start with 30 kilohertz. So you can separate all the arbitrary as, as you wish at every point. But for now, we just leave it as it is. Then we reset the power, and pick the power, the limit. So reference is up to you whether you want to put a margin on it. It's not necessarily. So I found that uh, we need to set it to minus 44 just to make it close to the signal of interest when you turn it on. So currently you don't see any signal here because the frequency is actually uh, moving up and down. It's, um, the fluctuating so as you can see it's starting from 1.49 to 1.54 so we set the center frequency first see that it's moving about it doesn't matter I just click that change that to 1 gigahertz so we have the signal here so assuming that this is a part that you want to measure at the first point of your signal the rise and the fall point that's what we are doing right now and it's a bit too much information right now let's turn off that switch for now while we're setting up so we go to switch single switch so the signal will be stay as it is let's go back to turning on second points so second points we can start from because the first point is between 2 mat and 2.3 mat so the second point we can start from 2.3 mat if you want to, to continue or if you don't want to you can actually by constant and move on to another point as you wish. So let's say we want to start now another 400 mag, 400 kilohertz, so 0.7 mag. So you see that it changed, and this is where I'm going to set the amplitude as well. Up to somewhere here, we expect it to be a bit lower. Okay, let's try to turn on uh, related to receive for some reason. Okay. The refill. So that's okay, we have um two two point three, two point three two two point seven and then let's turn on the last one. Let's say with two point seven megahertz. Two point seven megahertz. Four megahertz. Yep. Nice. Good. Two point seven megahertz. Yep. Yeah, this is all. So let's change the absolute. Okay. So this is where we want to make sure that it's flat. So you can see that the spectrum mask that I've created here. So this is the one that you're going to define on how you're going to measure the signal, how it occupies the channel that has been allocated to you, and with that you are also measuring at the point and this is the power level and you can straight away see whether it pass or fail the spectrum mass okay, let's say these are the three points that you want to measure so this is the lower point this is the upper point let's split now let's split and continue so you can see that as it starts scanning it will tell you which point is failing Why do we need to use SEM instead of limit file? So for limit file, when you create a limit file, it's always absolute frequency point. It means that if you set it to the between 996 max to 1.04 gig, it always stays there. So when you have another signal, you need a similar mask, you have to duplicate that limit file and it's a hassle to do that. But with this spectrum admission mask, can you change the center frequency? Let's say I have another signal at 2 gig. So I change it to 2 gig. No signal here. I will change my signal source to 2 gig. And you just transfer the same mask from one band to another. So to me, this is one of the good features to have as compared to limit file. 
you might ask so what's the difference between this um, mission mask compared to ACP so ACP is mostly out of band measurements actually what we want to do is we want to measure the side band what's going on on the side band versus the sample band the carrier signal and SCM is to determine that carrier signal mask So I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.